We're going to Key West. Key West. Key West. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Guys, I'm free in my RV. It is hot in the Florida Keys. Feels like August. And tomorrow is December, believe it or not. Alright, it's only about half an hour drive to our next destination. There goes our now vacant campsite. We're certainly gonna miss it. Bahia Honda State Park is a very special place. Especially now that we have the inside scoop on how to reserve those waterfront campsites. All you need is the right tools and a little luck. That new Big Pine Key Resort is almost completely empty. I wonder what's up with that. This, by the way, Big Pine Key, home to the endangered key deer. They are kind of elusive creatures. Now arriving in Summerland Key, we're almost there. There it is, on the left, that's our RV resort, just 20 miles from Mallory Square. We decided to splurge on a patio site and I think it is going to be worth it. Well, here we are, and after three days with just water and electric, we decided to spend a couple of nights with full hookups. Here we are at the, at the Sugarloaf Key West KOA, and uh, I believe this was one of the first campgrounds in the Florida Keys we ever stayed at. Uh, this one got completely destroyed by Hurricane Irma, so everything is pretty much brand new. I've been reliably informed that the only thing that remains from the original resort is the swimming pool. The pool bar used to be on the other side, and now it is here. And let me tell you, she makes the best mojito ever. And apparently there is live music, just not during our stay here. The keys, the lower keys in particular, are a tropical paradise. With a climate and vegetation not seen anywhere else in the United States. Here they have some rentals and the marina. This area looks almost exactly the same as it did before the hurricane. I'm really tempted to rent a pontoon, but since I've never driven one, I'd rather have someone who knows what they're doing with me the first time, just in case. I wouldn't want to run into an oyster bar or, or worse. These are the waterfront sites, with this sandy area so we can't pretend it is a beach. And here's the original sign they used to have at the main entrance. Here we are entering the pool from the other side, through the back. This is where the pool bar used to be, and now they have some hammocks, and games, and I just love the way they have landscaped the place. And as I mentioned, the bartender makes the best mojitos ever, with real mint, not too sweet and really, really strong. So today we're just gonna enjoy the campground, relax by the pool, get into the pool, and tomorrow we'll go to Key West. This is my magic spoon! No, seriously, this is Magic Spoon, our sponsor for this video. Cereal reinvented. And I want to share with you all the amazing benefits of Magic Spoon cereal. You know, they have this childlike nostalgia thing going on with the tastes that you remember, but with high protein, zero grams of sugar, except for that pesky honey nut that managed to sneak in just one gram, which is nothing really. It is also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, with no artificial colors or sweeteners. We love it, especially my mom, actually. She's diabetic, and she loves the fact that it's got zero grams of sugar. You know, I've never had the cinnamon roll flavor, so let's give it a taste test. 
Mmm. Mmm. Actually, this may be my new favorite. It tastes and it smells just like the real thing, but without all the sugar. Start your year off right with Magic Spoon. Click the link below, use my code TRAVELING for $5 off your very own variety box and choose from Magic Spoons like best-selling flavors like cocoa, fruity, peanut butter. I mean, they keep adding, you know, choose whatever you like. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code TRAVELING for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash traveling and save $5 off your order today. Also, for my Canadian and British friends, Magic Spoon also ships to Canada and the UK. Now, let's go back to Key West. We're going to Key West and uh, it's been a while, so we're certainly overdue. Let's see what's the best way to get out of this campground. There's a lot of construction still going on. They are building these two dwellings with rental units. We can see Fat Albert. That's what the locals affectionately call the tethered Air Force blimp. Here we see some boats run aground, probably because of Hurricane Ian. And while the destruction on the west coast was way worse, it did go over the dry Tortugas and Key West actually recorded the third highest storm surge since 1913. There it is, the highest point in the Florida Keys, locally known as Mount Trashmore. Here we are, after going over this bridge, we are in Key West! I love this entrance, with a row of palm trees, it's so quintessential. Here on Truman Avenue we have some examples of Key West's unique architecture. La Pension, we actually stayed there once, many years ago. We're approaching the epicenter of all the action, especially when it comes to nightlife. Duval Street. This is it, Duval Street. Such great ambience. The San Carlos Institute on the left is an important landmark in Cuban history, considered the cradle of the independence movement. And now we're approaching the two most famous blocks when it comes to nightlife. Personal note, little known fact, for many years I had a recurring dream with that kind of striped building on the left, which it turns out it used to be a Cuban cigar factory owner's bank from like back in 1891. And I didn't realize it until I came back to Key West one time and I'm like, I'll be darned, that's the building I've been dreaming about. True story. We parked here at Mallory Square, very expensive, but very convenient, especially if we're gonna have our last mojito of the day here at Maison de Pepe tonight. Here's where they do the, the, the sunset celebration. There's a cruise ship in town, so, um, yeah, I think what we wanted to do today was do the, the conch train. And that would be Sunset Key. You know why? Because the sun usually sets behind it. Oh, by the way it is, Christmas in Key West. Let's check out El Maison de Pepe for old time's sake. And I had never noticed this picture of Pepe before. I think it is the end of an era for El Maison de Pepe here because they no longer have chairs, you know, bar, bar stools at the bar, only to go drinks. Which is fine because Key West is one of those few places where you're allowed to walk around with a drink. And we're having a mojito, of course, because that's what you do. Are <laughs> you? Right on cue, brother. 
There's a funny story about all these chickens running around in Key West. Apparently, they are descendants of cockfighting chickens, a very popular pastime on the island until it became illegal in the 1970s. Yep. Let's continue walking around. By the way, Google Maps doesn't work very well in Key West. They sent us to the wrong address for parking. There's that historic building again, which, by the way, Key West and Cuban history became very intertwined in the 1860s. During the independence movement, a lot of Cubans came here to organize and plot overthrowing the Spanish colonial government. Key West is just so unique. As we keep walking down famous Duval Street, check it out. It is Key West's smallest bar. There it is, famous Sloppy Joe's. Well, apparently, this was the original location of Sloppy Joe's. So when Hemingway used to frequent these uh, places, it wasn't the other Sloppy Joe's half a block away, it was this one. Which nowadays it is Captain Tony's Saloon. Which is a nice bar too. Yeah, I love it when places have live music. This is one of the more unique bars in Key West, with the bull at the ground level, the whistler on the second floor, and the Garden of Eden up on the roof. This would be First Flight Brewery, located at the building that was the original headquarters of Pan American Airlines, which was also the birthplace of scheduled international flight between here and Havana. We've been here before. I even did a live stream from here once. Here they have a sign explaining the historical significance and all that. Well, this area here is called the Truman Annex. And if you keep going that way, that's uh, Harry Truman's little white house. And uh, we were there a couple of years ago. We we're not gonna do it again this time around. They don't let you film inside anyway, because it is to this day an official uh, presidential, uh, you know, home so they have secret service and all that so they only let you film in the outside and uh, at the you know little gift shop they have but yeah Harry Truman's little white house here we have one remaining fresh water tank used to power steam engines this is the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum but I wanted to show you this yeah, it is a makeshift Cuban raft, one of many used to cross the 90-odd miles from the north coast of Cuba to the United States. It is right in front of the Maritime Museum, which we might visit some other time, but uh, our time here is limited today, so we're gonna see if we can get on the, on the train. Here's the Custom House, nowadays the Museum of Art and History. A steel drum will give any place that island vibe. Not that Key West needs it. Look what we found. I think this is the one touristy thing we haven't done in Key West. Besides like the museums or the aquarium. And I think it is going to be a good way to get like an overview of the island. The lay of the land, if you will. Or another part of that tree, they form another trunk. So that tree continues to spread out. 
Today that tree covers more than two blocks on the island. It is considered the largest banyan tree in the state. The end of the road. That, of course, refers to the end or the beginning, depending which way you're going, of US-1. The other end, 2,370 miles north at Fort Kent, Maine. Someday we might drive the whole thing. That would be a Kapok tree, also known as a Saba, here by the Monroe County Courthouse. This is Bahama Village, a historic neighborhood settled by Bahamians in the late 1800s. And that would be Hemingway's house, where he lived during the 1930s. And that would be the Key West Lighthouse. And coming up, perhaps the most recognizable landmark here, the southernmost point concrete buoy, which is not located at the southernmost point which is somewhere inside the Truman Annex Naval Air Station. And that would be the southernmost point in Key West. Ballast Key, a private island a little farther southwest, is the true southernmost point in the lower 48. But this is the landmark where people make the line to take a selfie, so we'll pretend it is. It is also in reality 94 miles to Cuba, but here in Key West, things don't seem to be too exact, which is fine. Besides, 90 sounds a lot better as a round number. Of course, around here we have the southernmost house, the southernmost hotel. Well, you get what I'm saying. Going through some residential neighborhoods now. Now we're reaching the southern part of the island, Smothers Beach, one of the nicer ones actually. I went parasailing here once, many years ago. The water is always calm because of the coral reef offshore. And that's probably why we have some shrimping boats here too. And that's the AIDS Memorial. And an iguana. Now for the cemetery. To this side of the island. This is all part of Solaris Hill. It's the highest ground in Key West, so this area is much better protected. But it's also a giant coral rock. It's very difficult to dig down. And that's why you see so many of the tombs in there are both ground. There it is, the official rum of the Conk Republic. And why Conk Republic, you might ask? Well, this happened after the Border Patrol put a checkpoint on US-1 back in 1982, similar to the ones you might encounter in Texas or Arizona, and in protest, Key West mayor announced Key West was seceding from the United States, calling themselves the Conk Republic, after the mollusk that populates the surrounding waters. Their independence didn't last very long, but the name stuck. And to this day, the natives call themselves Conks. And if you move here and stay for seven years, then you are called a freshwater conch. That's the original Margaritaville and the San Carlos once again. Pegasus, we stayed there once also. And we're back by mile marker zero. It does feel like we're going in circles sometimes.
sculpture park here. Yep, they have a bust for pretty much everybody that was somebody in the history of Key West. Well, not everybody, but most. It's a family. Here we have a young Hemingway. Carlos Manuel de Céspedes, Harry Truman. Let's see if we can find a scenic route along the coast to the marina. I think we just snuck into a hotel. I thought all this communicated back here, but it doesn't, so we're gonna have to get back on the main road. There's Hemingway Rum Company, Papa's Pilar Rum Distillery. I'm telling you, this town is milking old Ernest for all his worth. Actually feels real nice in the shade. And uh, by the way, it, we've been to Key West probably by now, 20 times, I want to say. So many things we're not really going to do. We're trying to do things we've never done, like like that a conch train, a train and... Um, oh, this looks nice in here. Interesting. And we're now by the historic seaport. The marina, as I like to call it. We've never eaten at Conk Republic over there, so that's what we're going to do. I always see it full of people with great ambience, sometimes they have live music. Sunset sails. It was here that we took a sunset cruise a couple of years ago. This schooner bar looks promising and it has live music, but I've already made up my mind on the other one. But first, let's stop by Waterfront Brewery. It's a Truman Double IPA. Cheers. Now let's go eat. fish tank by the bar. Oh yeah, the snapper. Well, let me tell you, in all the times I've been to Key West, I kind of never came here. I mean, let's face it, it's the touristy place in the touristy area. And uh, putting that aside, the food was excellent. The drinks were really good. I mean, that, that uh, snapper dish with the, with the veggies, I mean, the, the, the chimichurri, the flavor was there. It's incredible. And check it out. Hello, brother. <laughs> um, that being said, it is expensive, which is in a sense good if you want to splurge like on your last night in Key West. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Well, after such a delicious meal, you need a Cuban coffee. And here we've got Cuban Coffee Queen. Cheers. It's hot. And apparently, it is Christmas time in the Conk Republic, Key West. 
I suppose this would be a Key West style Christmas tree made out of lobster traps. Hmm, Ukraine, that's a new one. Just in and out. As it is tradition, we're going to Mallory Square for sunset celebration. Key West certainly starts coming alive as the sun goes down. Christmas in Key West. And the Scarlet Lady is leaving port. They always do right before sunset. One of these days, one of these days we have to get on one of those floating tiki bars. Meanwhile, at El Maison de Pepe, well, the band is just starting to warm up. A reduced band. There may have been a budget cut at some point. Regardless, this place always brings back good memories. Oh, sunset is upon us. There are always street performers at Mallory Square at this time of the day, at sunset. It is December, so the sun is setting more to the south and not behind Sunset Key. Meanwhile, at El Maison, and uh, as much as I would like to linger and have perhaps one last mojito, it is time to go. Maybe next time we'll stay on the island so we can stay much longer into the night, like in the olden days. But for now, we are once again saying goodbye to Key West.
On the next one, we're going to explore my adopted hometown of Miami, Florida. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. Riding in my